Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to start this uh, Eve of Match Briefing conference uh, for England ahead of their bronze final against Argentina tomorrow at Stade de France. We are joined on the top table on the far right by Saman Hill, head coach Steve Borthwick and Maro Itoji. We'll go straight to the first question, please. Hi, everyone. Thanks for your time. Uh, Steve, obviously we've seen the RFU statement today about the Tom Curry situation. Is there anything you'd like to add to, to that? Yeah, I think it's a pretty comprehensive statement and I think there's a little that you can add to it. I think what we we'll do is the RFU has expressed great disappointment at World Rugby's decision. What we we'll do is that disappointment is shared by Tom, his teammates, the, the management team, everybody associated with this team shares that, that, that bitter disappointment at World Rugby's decision. Is one of the difficult situations that for all parties there isn't a sort of resolution one way or another and it's kind of, it almost potentially leaves a cloud over both players, which I'm sure nobody wants? Oh, let's be clear, Tom Curry's done nothing wrong. There's no, yeah. let's be clear on that. Yeah. So we've got a victim of a situation who's not been able to have his voice heard. That, by World Rugby's decision, they've denied the opportunity for the, the victim of the situation, Tom Curry, to have his voice heard. That's where the, the disappointment really comes. And I know you said yesterday that he's absolutely fine in himself and, and obviously, you know, totally, completely professional and preparing as per usual. Is that still the case or do you have to sort of get around him even tighter than, than yesterday because of, because of this now? Well, I'm sure the men either side of me be able to talk about it more, but I sense that, that firstly, I say Tom has been incredible all week, as he as he always is. He's he's an incredible professional um, and a, a real hard, tough rugby player. Um, but I think everyone needs support sometimes, and I think what you the players have certainly ensured, and um, the whole management ensured Tom has been getting plenty of support through this situation. Hi, Steve. I know you, you have lots of motivations for this game, but there's what Tom's been through this week. Does that add anything to that, to trying to do it for him? We, we've got lots of motivation. The, the players have got tons of motivation playing, playing for England in, in a game, competing for the third place at the World Cup. And there's, there's tons of motivation. The situation, and let, let's be clear here, I know, I know people keep talking about the situation regarding Tom. Tom Curry has done nothing wrong. Somebody has said something to Tom Curry, Tom's reported it, then there's been a situation that the world will be made a decision not to allow the, the opportunity for the victim's voice to be heard. That's where the disappointment comes from. Now, Tom's been brilliant. We're, in terms of this week, focusing on uh, the, the game that we've got to play tomorrow, tomorrow night that we're looking forward to. And the players have been fantastic ensuring that Tom gets all the support he needs. And, and can I just ask about the training today? You had five players leading the team out who may or may not be playing for England again. Assuming that wasn't a coincidence, and maybe just a couple of quick words on on that departing quintet. Um, to be brutally honest, I didn't see it, and um, yeah, I assume nothing organised tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think it was just. Uh, I, I don't know about not. I don't know if all of them may or may not play. Um, as, as for them to decide, and you know the big man to my right. Um, however, you know they are senior members of the squad. The, they've they've had a great career in playing for England, represent, re representing the jersey, um, and you know I think they just had a. I guess seniority seniority rules um, on their on their entrance to the stadium. Mario, you did a bit of a number on Argentina in the group stage. What do you think their motivation for tomorrow night will be? Uh, well, again, we're competing for third place at this World Cup, so there are loads. There's, you know, it's, it's, there's loads to be motivated about. Um, I guess from their point of view, you know, we beat them earlier. They'll probably want to turn that around. Um, but it's going to be a great contest. It's two two top teams going at it um two good teams two high quality teams 
two teams coming off the back of a loss and wanting to get it right. And Sam, how does it feel to be back on the World Cup stage? Yeah, um, be almost almost normal with with the the lads that are here. Obviously, spent a fair bit of time with them in the in the build up. Um, delighted to be a part of it. It's always an honour to be a part of the group, even more so to be playing. So, um, yeah, for me personally, a, a massive honour and um, very grateful to be here. And, and Steve, um, are there any details on Kevin Sinfield's future? There's been a suggestion that he might stand down after the World Cup. Yeah, I think I've been in this job nine, ten months, and one thing I've learned very quickly is it's impossible and unwise to comment upon every rumour and piece of speculation that's thrown out. So um, I'm making no comment on any of that. Hi, Steve. Will here. Um, just back on the, the situation we've had this whole week, is there any process by which you can take this further or make more representations of World Rugby or, I don't know, appeal the decision at all? For our point, we'll leave that. We, the RFU's can be pretty catalog with their statement today. As far as we're concerned, we've got a game tomorrow night and we're getting on with that. Now, um, I think everything we've done, everything Tom's done has been done in the right way. Um, I think and World Rugby's come to this decision, which is incredibly disappointing. Do you worry that because it's been left so unsatisfactorily for all parties that it will now overshadow future games between England and South Africa? Um, I, I, I don't think so in that regard. But I think what, what is important to say right now, and I say so with, with in my role here, is that discrimination has got no part in what we do, no part whatsoever. The RFU statement makes that clear. We stand by that as well. Can I ask you, Sam and Maro, I won't ask you about the situation itself, but just how you supported Tom in, in the tricky week, Maro, first? Um, well, first I'll say I think Tom has been tremendous. He's been incredibly courageous to do what he's done and the manner he's done it. He's done it, you know, as Steve said, in the right way, through proper channels, conducting himself in, in a manner that you know, he should be proud of and his family and definitely as teammates were proud of him, of what he's done because to do that isn't easy, you know, to, um, to, make, to make a statement like that isn't easy, to call out stuff like that isn't easy and as, as he's seen this week when you do something courageous like that you put yourself out there um, and he's been absolutely fantastic in that regard um, and in terms of how we've tried to support him just just to be there for him just to uh, you know try and be there for him in any way he, he needs um, if he needs to talk about anything um, you know we're always there for him but he's a strong man he has a strong personality strong will um, and he's been, as I said, he's been great throughout the week. Has it been troubling for you to see the abuse he's got when he's just raised something that he thought he heard on the field and it's him who's getting quite a lot of the heat on social media and other places? Mm. Uh, Tom is the innocent party in this, in this respect. He's, he's, as Steve said, he's done nothing wrong. He's you know, the victim of the situation. So for him to have this abuse is you know, disgraceful. <clears throat> on a slightly lighter note as well like his players it's his 50th cap this week um, he's an incredible example of a, of a professional player and a, and a test player so for us as, as players we're not going to let that overshadow a massive occasion for, for him, his family and for us Hi Steve um, can, I ask about, can I ask about George Martin? It looks like he's got some kind of brace on his knee is that an ongoing concern? Is that just precautionary? Yeah, so he, he tweaked his knee in the game last weekend. Um, had investigations this week. You'll see a specialist back in England at the start of next week. Um, we don't anticipate it being a, a major long-term problem, but make sure it's, it's handled right. Obviously made him unavailable for selection this weekend, um, but don't anticipate it being a, a long-term injury. And, and Ben Earl was talking in the week about this potentially being an occasion for new leaders to step up and set the direction that England can go in over the next four years, potentially. Do you see that as a real opportunity for maybe some of the younger guys in the squad to really step up and lead the way? I see a couple of things. One, that I think there's a great opportunity tomorrow night to play another finals game 
the World Cup. No, it's not the final we wanted. It's not the game on Saturday we wanted to be in. I think that's another incredible experience for this team. And the same thing I'll say is I think there's enormous growth in this squad. Um, I've said all along that I think there's been a great blend of experience and, and young, exciting talent coming through. And I think there is enormous growth. Last weekend, I talked about the age profiles of all the four semi-finalists and where England were. Um, I think we were two years younger on average than the South African team. And so I, I think with that, all those things in mind, I think there is enormous potential for growth. Hello, Steve. A question about Harry Arundel. Uh, for you, is he only a winger or a versatile player? And in which area uh, can he improve? No, I think he can play across the back three. I think, as you've seen, we've got some pretty good uh, full-backs in this squad. So I think the, the, certainly the opportunities where I've used him has been um, on the wing, but he's also trained at full-back with us. Um, so having that versatility is... Uh, really important. I think what I see with him is he's always the last off the training field. He's the one who's still on the training field after the goal kickers, after Owen and George and Marcus have finished. Um, Henry's out there working exceptionally on, on, on all his, on his skill development. Um, so again, f following from the previous question, it's about the, the potential for growth in this squad and development of this squad. Um, I think Henry's a very, very exciting player for 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 tomorrow night and the future of English rugby. Um, question for Mary, please. Um, in the bit we were allowed to see of training, there were a lot of huddles going on. C can you give us a flavour of what, what was said? And w was that sort of celebrating the players moving on or was it something different? Um, no, no, it wasn't. It was, it was mainly about our game plan um, in terms of just, again, getting clarity about how we want to play and specific areas of the field. Uh, a question for Sam, Sam and Marrow, just on Courtney. Um, c can you sum up how difficult the transition is, may maybe particularly for Marrow first, it is to go from second row to reinvent yourself as a blindside flanker and how much you think he's sort of improved in that role? No, I think Courtney has been fantastic. Um, you know, I think he's he's one of those players who's evolved over time and has found a way to get better. He's um, you know played across different eras. He played in with the man to my right back in you know the early two thousands, <laughs> and he's um, he's still playing today. So he's um, the way he's evolved his game is 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 amazing. Um, and you know he's a great he's a great man he's a great man great person the boys have loved being around him he's you know set a good example with his dedication on the field and you know for for all of the squad he, um, you know he's gonna he's gonna be missed. Yeah, I think Mara said it all there. It's hard to think of someone that's as good as a, a, as many things as he is. He's obviously an incredible lineup forward, incredible in defence. He's a good ball carrier. Um, his work rate's phenomenal. He's he's a a great example of a of a world class back row. I can't think of of anyone better I've played with. Um, so yeah, I'd be sorely missed. Um, but a great bloke to be around. Yeah. Any further questions? Sam, just just for your situation, I know obviously. You've been fully fit for a while now, but you did have obviously injuries before that. How big an opportunity is this for you to, in a way that, in a similar way to Ben talking about setting a tone for what's to come? I mean, um, the the opportunity in itself for this match to to state your case for what well, one to hopefully win this match and go home with a medal, but to state your case for the new cycle, um, it's it's a big opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, I think one of the things I've learned is you can't think too far ahead in rugby. Normally, the the next game's the best one to focus on so um, yeah for me I'll, I'll be um, you know trying to make everyone proud of the weekend and put a put performance in that I'm proud of and and yeah normally your goals are pretty aligned with playing well so um, yeah it's an easy easy sort of motivation um, as to whether anything comes of it that's uh, out of my hands but yeah it's got a lot of motivation for the weekend for sure.
And Steve, just on Henry, like you say, great to see that he's so dedicated. And but clearly, at sort of points early in the in the tournament, people were saying, were wondering, you know, why he wasn't playing more. But you were very clear about what you wanted from your wingers in the very specific game plan. Um, are those the sorts of areas that he, you, you, you know, he will and you will be looking to sort of round out in his game in the years ahead? And because obviously we know everything about his sort of explosive talents, don't we? But are those the bits that someone like Johnny May? You know, was clear about building block by block over the course of his obviously very impressive career. Yeah, and and I think, I think as as players gain more experience, each one of those things informs the guys of, of, um, ex, of what they need to do. Having seen situations before, they're never exactly the same, but there are, there are always some similarities there, and you can draw from that experience. I I think that the the other players you mentioned, Johnny May, Johnny May's um, kind of taken Henry under his wing a little bit as well through this this summer and and, and trying to impart all of his his knowledge and share that with Henry and, and Henry to his immense credit has a has a great thirst for knowledge. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing Henry go tomorrow night. Thank you very much, gentlemen. This is the end of this press conference. Thank you.